um, because I've got experience of people that use the products. I personally uh, don't use the products, and but my wife does, and she, she seems very happy with what uh, what what they have to offer. Um, I, I think with Apple now, I think if they're very clever and, and play play properly uh, and don't make mistakes that Microsoft made then I think maybe the future for Apple could be very different. So you look at Microsoft's reputation in, in the in the minds of the, even the average user now, and I certainly haven't come across anybody who has a good word to say about Microsoft products. They're tolerated, maybe out of necessity, but they're certainly not loved or cherished. And Apple, rightly or wrongly, um, have got that love from the mainstream user. So I think uh, Apple are in a, in, in a good position. It's very divisive, though. I think it's very poor, because if you speak... I don't know about where you are, but in here in Manchester, when I speak to people, uh, friends of mine, most of them don't like, some of them really, really hate Apple, and right. they're not very much into computers, they don't even know about the patents, don't know too mm. much about Steve Jobs, but I think they tend to associate it with very smug people, because they know people who are into Apple, and they associate them straight away with all those people, with those gadgets that they kind of, you know, clamor over. And when I when you hear about Apple, when they hear about Apple, it pretty much surprises me. They're like, "Oh, Apple! I hate them. It's like the snobs and stuff." I, I, su I suppose it's, it's it's very subjective, and it depends on where your your geographical location and your, your circle of uh, friends and acquaintances. If I was to give a ratio with Apple and Android um, in my circle of friends, I would say it's probably probably about 65 percent. Apple at the moment, maybe even 70% Apple compared to Android. Uh, did uh, you see the survey in the UK uh, which says that the, uh, well basically it says half of people have a smartphone now and the fastest growing one or the most dominant one now is Android in the UK mm. with the expectation that within about a year or less than a year it will have 70% market share. And the States has got some new statistics based on one firm, uh, I can't pretty remember for sure its name. Uh, and this one says that the Apple has become the third biggest seller of phones, which is interesting because you don't even have to aggregate all the Android sellers. Uh, even HTC on its own is number one, number two is Samsung, and number three is Apple. And obviously Samsung and HTC both sell Android, and each one of them individually sells more phones than Apple in the States. Which is just shows you this is this is why Apple started to quite frantically sue uh, well over a year ago. They started with HTC, which is now number one, and then they went after Samsung, which is now number two, uh, and they still try to embargo it. So far, they failed. Even even Larry Ellison doing the lawsuit from Oracle, which is a really mysterious lawsuit. If you look back, you, you say, so why would they sue? Why would what would be the interest? And you have to look very closely into what. Happened. You know, Steve Jobs was saying in his relationship with Larry Ellison, it looks to me very, very suspicious now, and I'm pretty sure he has something to do with Steve Jobs and his friend uh, trying to give trouble to, to Android and say, oh, it's a stolen technology. You know, they tried to go after Java, after the Java allegation and copyright and stuff. So basically, this lawsuit has been postponed until next year, uh, so it seems like it's going to carry on for at least two years. Uh, it started in 2010 and 2012. Uh, they will still be talking about, it. I think it's the next SCO case, the SEO case, and Grokla is just almost every post there now is about the Google case, Google versus, sorry, not Google, really, yeah, Oracle versus Google. Google is more like the victim here. Uh, so, yeah, and, and, oh, and something we didn't mention before, we have a Florian Muller. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, uh, I, I get information from people. We were very, very close to exposing him. I, I believe, based on what I was told, the guy was just about to pass me documents to show this guy was working for, receiving payments from Microsoft. And guess what happened? And then he comes out, oh, I'm being transparent now. And they're like, yes, I have a contract with Microsoft. So he kind of beat me to it before I could, like, expose him. He basically announces, yes, he's working for Microsoft. And then, yeah. Breaks about the you know Microsoft now mentions him and he's still just being himself, being a complete uh, I don't know curse, but he he's he's just doing a propaganda campaign against Android and against everything Linux and against uh, all the people who are trying to work to abolish software patents and also what he's what he's doing worse now he he promotes other lobbyists to Microsoft and he calls them like industry or business groups even though he knows very well that they're funders for Microsoft he's trying to deceive people. And we made the uh, one of the pages of one of the Austrian newspapers because uh, because in tech rights we've been exposing Florian for a long time, 
So they gave us some credit for basically exposing long before anyone else did. And basically being right on, not only about him, but about other lobbies. So Microsoft were now working towards trying to ban, uh, to embargo uh, phones and tablets based on Android. Well, I, I can't say I've had any discussions with you. I think I had a, a passing couple of sentences on Twitter, I believe, uh, about a year and a half ago. And I, I occasionally see his name mentioned uh, on Google Plus when I've been scanning through streams. But uh, certainly, I, I know, Roy, you, you have been discussing uh, Florian for quite a while. And certainly for next year or next season, that would really be a very interesting person to get on. Uh, tech bites if he would come on. I, I would certainly like to, to hear him and hear you and uh, see what see where the discussion goes because uh, there's certainly a lot of topics to cover. Um, what we'll do now is I think we'll close the show up because according to my clock it's getting on to the hour um, and we said before the show that uh, well I, I had hoped we'd do an hour show because I've got many other things to do tonight and this was one of the things I wanted to that was most important on my agenda. Um, in regards to feedback, we've had quite uh, I've had a quite a lot of feedback on uh, a few social networks and via email and it's really, really satisfying that people would listen to the show and to take the time to send a little message and say uh, what they enjoy and even what they don't enjoy. So uh, thank you so much to everybody for sending that. Uh, I know there's been a couple of people on Diaspora who've uh, sent me messages to, to say uh, listen to the show and uh, keep up the work, etc. So, so that's really nice. Now, I've got a little bit of a topic here which just it's, it's sort of a bit of feedback and I apologise to 99.99% of the listeners this will mean absolutely nothing to you Occupy um, Wall Street sorry? Occupy Wall Street <laughs> <laughs> right this is going to mean absolutely nothing to the vast majority of people but it is a correction which I have I feel I have to do and I have promised I would do um, so everybody else can probably press stop now although I know you won't but you can press stop now because if you don't know what I'm talking about like I say it'll mean nothing to you anybody listening to the very first show will uh, probably remember that we had an interview that Roy did with uh, a gentleman called Brandon Loza and uh, it seems very ironic now that on the very last show of the first season he will also be mentioned again now Brandon Loza is or was a ambassador for Fedora. He tells me in uh, one of the news groups that he's now an ex, or he, or he considers himself an ex ambassador of Fedora, the distribution. Um, but there was a topic recently, a discussion in the Tech Bytes channel regarding um, some of Mr. Loss's theories, and uh, I was having a discussion talking about them. And Mr. Loss would like a correction made because I made a mistake and I apologise for that uh, profusely. I believe that Mr. Loza believed in extraterrestrials um, controlling mankind and it was a bit of a discussion in the Tech Rights channel which as I've said many times before we often discuss topics which are completely off topic to Linux and free and open source software and this was one of those occasions. Um, Mr. Loza contacted me uh, via a news group and uh, wanted to clarify his opinions to me and what he actually believes and I feel obliged now to make the correction because obviously I was wrong and Mr. Loza doesn't believe in extraterrestrials. So the question you've probably got now is what does Mr. Loza believe in? Well according to him, and I'll read this directly because I'm not quite sure I'm understanding the theory that he has, but maybe it might make uh, some ring some bells with some people. So extraterrestrials are out and he believes in ancient architects that were Neanderthals with a hive mind computer. Um, a quantum entanglement link between savant brains. Now I hope that means something to somebody because that's the correction that's come from Mr. Loza. Um, if you do want further clarification, I suggest you catch up with him in Compos Linux Advocacy and he's still posting there, he's very active. And I hope Mr. Loza feels that I've uh, corrected his point of view properly. So, like I say, he doesn't believe in aliens, he believes in Neanderthals with a hive mind computer. And Mr. Lossa, I hope you're happy that that's been corrected fully. And Roy, I don't know, on that note, I'll pass it over to you if you want to add any other feedback. Um, mm. If there's anything else you want to add. Well, generally, uh, I'm trying to think what's safe to say. This, well, this well, I, 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 I'll say, I'll I, see what I have to say without <laughs> mentioning it. Uh, we had this uh, issue. I, I think we, uh, uh, different types of trolls and different types of sort of parasites and sites. <clears throat> and I think certain people, uh, will express certain opinions to try and uh, 
either to shock people or to uh, to try and piggyback a certain traffic on a site. So they may glue themselves onto a site, uh, hoping to drag with them uh, some of these subscribers.